Hey, welcome to Geek Fruit Retcon, where we travel back in time to a previous episode from our inglorious history on the Geek Fruit Podcast. Happy listening, you nerds. Welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. You're listening to Geek Fruit with Tejas, Jishnu, and Dinka. Hi and welcome to the Geek Food Podcast with me Tejas and you Jishnu. That's me. Just for those who are unacquainted, uh, Geek Food is a platform for all nerds in India to be, you know, united because I feel like we're kind of estranged. That's also what it says on our website. It's yeah, it's a platform for anybody and everybody, nerd or not. Hey, N- nerd that, or not? That kind of rhymed because you know, we, if you if you if you well, the, if the, you the, want to be, yeah. Hey, that's hi, true. Welcome. Yeah, we do a lot Join of like, us, won't you? We do a lot of introductory <clears throat> starter yeah. things Stuffs. for <laughs> for for newbies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. I yeah. think that that's a good thing that that we can do. Because the world of science fiction and fantasy is is a wonderful world and those who are unacquainted uh you know, though I I I see the light in their eyes whenever they discover something really amazing. I like I'm going through <laughs> it with a, a couple of friends who are watching Star Wars for the first time and they're just like, "Dude, I like one of my friends Shanali just said, "Tejas, I understand you more because I watched Star Wars. I was like, yes, we you understand you start to understand a you start lot to, of people. You start to understand a lot of the silly puns and references. That's, well, that, that, well that's that, that's, that's that one, one thing. One no, but way. also this is the way that people like, you know, what, what they're so passionate about. I did this one meme about uh it was just a simple one. It just said, it was just text and it said uh I I always feel bad for those people who, you know, start suddenly start talking about their passions, you know, and keep rambling and then suddenly they say sorry, 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 sorry because somebody when they were doing it for the first time, somebody said shut the heck up. Nobody wants to hear about that and you just feel bad about those people. So that's why they keep saying sorry now. <laughs> Which is very true about true a enough. lot of yeah. nerds, man. Yeah. So yeah. But hey, if you want to really know everything about us, I am yes. told that yeah. you can see everything else that we've done so far on Savan. On Savan. Yeah, so, they should be able to see it right now if you're listening to it on the Savan app. You uh, should be able to see all the work that Jishnu and I and sometimes Dinkar have put into uh talking about movies and television and cartoons. Today we have an episode about a cartoon uh which is an old cartoon but an oldie has, but a goodie. A oldie but an amazie. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll accept that. it. I'll so, accept it. Uh, but before we get into it, uh, just do any news? W- what's been up? What's happening in the world of science fiction and fantasy, man? Hit me, dog. Have you heard about um, X 23s introduction? Yes. yes. I'm quite excited for that. Funny you should mention <clears throat> X 23. So, we've actually been putting together a list. I mean, Dinkar and I have been talking about it, about characters that have been introduced not in comic books, but from cartoons. that have made it into then made back into comic books ah, and then made it into into movies right. and one of uh, the great ones is X23 mm-hmm. who was uh, introduced in X-Men Evolution Ms Wolverine yeah she, she's she, she's 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 the daughter of, of Wolverine if i'm not mistaken no yeah? it's just she she sort of i i believe that she uh, considers him like a dad like a father figure oh they're not, not like so, no, not blood related no, i believe that i, I don't be- I okay. think that there's any blood relation. Can't if remember. there is, if there is any, then it's b- because of like an experimental, like blood transfusion kind of right. thing. Because uh, it's something to the effect of she was made. Uh, she was the twenty third test subject in yeah. a series of sure. you know, just re resurrecting the uh, the X project. Uh, what's it called? Again? Weapon X. Weapon X project. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so she's just a female version uh, that. But she of has. A, that's so she meant has. To be an assassin, she has one uh, one dude on her foot. She's got one, one dude on either feet, and she's got two <laughs> dudes in her hands. I don't know why they s- chose to like dumb down. Well, well not dumb down, but they probably like, why said why not three? Why not four? Uh, I don't know. I think it's Why because they want to show just one giant blade. I, I think they wanted to show that it's not it's not it's an imperfect process. <laughs> Wolverine got lucky because he already had bone claws for them to attach this onto. So I don't know how they I don't know how they figured this out. Yeah. But I will mean, probably have to watch X-Men Evolution again. Yeah. So that's one character and, and potentially um Wolverine 3. Yeah, she's in Wolverine. The last 3. last Hugh Jackman movie in theory will have X twenty three in it. That's still and that's rumored still at the moment. And hopefully also the the yellow suit man. Yeah. I mean Jesus, <clears throat> about time. About How many incarnations of Wolverine have we seen so far? This is uh, his ninth. Three. This is going to be his ninth movie. This is a ninth movie. This is going to be his ninth <laughs> movie, and it's yeah. based on Old Man Logan, which is going to make the the yellow suit thing a little 
uh, interesting to see how they handle uh, they it should, because it's set in the future. Flashback. They have to do flashbacks, right? So it's set. It's set in the future. Um, now it's we we don't know if it's you know days of future past. The future or if it's yeah. the no, original the X-Men this will be the the, the, the future the future which was um, intended to be but didn't happen in days of future past which is right. why they had to change it but then again yeah. the effects of apocalypse might just give us all this is also as well. true. so any yeah. it's all kind of up in the air at the moment they'll um, probably do a flashback what i really want to see is him, is him actually wear the suit and mm-hmm. not like you know him, him like open a trunk and then like it the the, yeah. the yellow suit is there that would suck i mean but uh, i mean i could i could easily see just based on the way that he like cameoed especially in uh, I think it was first class that was the best where he, where he just said you know go F yourself yeah. to those guys um, <laughs> that was amazing I could, I could see him snarkily sort of doing that because I mean everybody knows how badly the fans want to see that eventually happen and so I think like that particular character while Hugh Jackman himself has yeah. you know he's done things like tweeting out yeah, openly to fans being like, like what do you hit, want <laughs> like hit me with everything you want me to do and some somebody maybe not even he himself maybe some assistant of his or somebody like is sifting through yeah. thousands upon thousands of tweets That's good. so I could easily see them at the very least it's doing f- doing something like that where yeah, in which fan service you yes. see it and you know maybe it it cuz it has to, it has to work with the story that, did you that like is uh, first, first did you like I, I may have asked you this in a previous episode but uh, did you like the wolverine the not x men origins um, the wolverine the james man the, film the japanese one yeah i liked that a yeah, lot i, I really did liked like it. that a lot it was i liked great. that a lot a lot a lot <laughs> i did like it um and actually like it, it, it felt as it was like I'm the think, third the I'm third thinking, uh, half i mean third um, act feel, but I, it's good i'm i'm drawing a blank so mm. i remember that the ending scene the post credit scene in the airport yeah so uh, that i just i really can't remember it too well i just remember it it was awesome it was, uh, but it was ages ago no no was i'll that? tell you uh, it's basically uh, uh, so they wanted to connect it back to uh days of future past right yeah. and uh so it's basically he enters an air- an airport and then you know there's a metal mm-hmm. detector as usual and uh, suddenly everything goes still yeah, and it's so like Magneto a moment. and, and Magneto's Charles there come by. and Charles appears again and yeah. you know in like X-Men the last stand he yeah. gets you know eviscerated mm-hmm. like by uh by Jean Grey so or Dark Phoenix whichever yeah. and uh yeah so he the fact that he's back is you know is this a thing and they're yeah. saying we have a you know thing to fight so um we we had an episode all talking all about um, x men and deadpool and yeah deadpool we did that. and all that a couple a little while ago yeah. but um I, i still can't get my head around was that the last x men movie that we've seen deadpool not counting deadpool the the japanese the wolverine no movie. no days of future past days of future past yeah, because that, the right? post credits so this was in between first class and future past right yes yes okay cool. i would i suppose. just have a hard time really <laughs> keeping track of that universe it's yeah, just it's, the it's timeline so is a little wonky especially now because yeah. of the alternate timeline yeah, or something exactly, but it's good yeah. like it's we'll, fine i mean we're going to we're going to dissect that when apocalypse comes yeah. out so i guess we'll we'll do that then but it's cool so x23 so i just want to add to that list of characters which have made from cartoons to movies harley quinn man harley quinn Oh yeah. Yeah, Harley is from from the animated series and made mm-hmm. it to the to the movie. So that's 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 really cool. Made the movies back to the comics. I I like that yeah. now um They take cartoons seriously. I I I I, I kind of think you can't really call them exclusively comic book movies anymore. I mean cuz like at this point um yeah. cuz at this point like you said, you know, some some of these characters and some of these storylines are not are no longer based on comics. Yeah. There's the universe that There's was a or, bunch of stuff, the universe yeah. originated in the comics it's kind of like imagine if we had the bible yeah it's like imagine you, if we had it <laughs> imagine if we if imagine if it was a thing right yes. so we had that we have that that universe we have those stories so it's sort of like but then the bible the animated series also would come out exactly yeah. and then those animated series characters get their own movies and is this like, super blasphemous i don't know i don't know it's fine it's okay i don't think wait, about wait, this wait, stuff. we're using it as a as an example that's what as the world should okay. anyway <laughs> we, we're going to take a short break and then we're going to talk we're going to come back to cartoons and we're going to talk mm-hmm. about a very very uh near and dear near and dear cartoon yeah. the pop of girls we'll be back in a bit Finding the right drink at the right place can be a big challenge exploring a new destination to its fullest could be a daunting task So tune in every Friday and listen to the Drinks and Destinations podcast with Rajita and Samira who introduce you to the world of fine wines, beer, spirits and travel. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Audio Boom or any other local podcast app. Hello again. And we're back on the Geek Food podcast we with never leave. Tejas and Jishnu. We never leave. We and never leave you. We're not we didn't leave but we should to the city of towns. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh man, you know that's what I miss about uh Slow the clap. new series. 
the the 2016 yeah, I really, series. I really did miss. Uh, just oh, there just like a intro, lot of things. They've that changed was, a few things, mm-hmm. but and one of them is the, you know the whole intro has the, the yeah. narrator kind of go like the city of town. Yeah, girl. yeah, yeah. And that that new That's theme missing. song is it's, it's it, grown on me now. Has it's, it? Yeah, it's it, a bit. I mean, it's it's grown know. on me. Like okay. Um, so we're talking about the pop of girls, and we're talking about a little bit about the the history, and we're going to talk about the particularly the new series, the pop of girls 2016. It's a big deal. Just to preface it, why we're gonna why we're doing this episode, obviously because pop of girls is an amazing cartoon. It was done by one of the the one of the I guess three you know better or biggest like uh, animators and creators from the golden era of Cartoon Network, and this was Craig McCracken. And, uh, so great name. Amazing name. All of great them had great name. names. Uh, so Craig McCracken made this great series, uh, six seasons, really, really good show, and perfectly targeted towards the audience, like the, 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 the children's audience that they were going for. And it's just like Legacy Man. And they, they, they have done so many different versions of it. Pop of Girl Z, they've done like, they did a reunion, not reunion episode, like a anniversary episode. And then last to last year in 2014, they did a, a special episode, which was a 3D rendered episode with like this weirdish kind of animation, which featured Ringo Starr. We're going to talk about the Beatles and the Pop of Girls a little later on. Uh, but yeah, man, so this is the... This is the latest incarnation of of the Pop of Girls, which is Pop of Girls t- like 2016. There's no other way to, to if you want to torrent it. <laughs> that's that's how you have to find it. Pop of Girls 2016, and they've changed the voices of the three main leads, and they've basically updated the animation and the art, and yeah, that's where we're at. They're 11 episodes down. So, like I was saying, the theme song, <clears throat> the theme song is now uh, updated and changed. Like, it's like this, like uh, a, like a lot of things, right? And yeah. so, for, like those, for those for those that don't kinda, know, yeah. Um, Mr. Menon has a long-standing history with the original <laughs> theme song. If yeah. you've ever seen him perform, seen yeah. uh, seen so us f- perform, we, we should we should we should just uh, we should just go from scratch and say that we are we are, so there's a band that we both play in, and we usually start our show uh, with Pop of Girls. And why I did that is because. I mean, uh, if you're a singer songwriter, you kind of have to, you know, get everybody's attention. And like, I did it. I used to do it as a line check, as a sound check thing. And then once I didn't get a sound check, and they just said go on and play. And I played it just to check if the levels were good. And you should see everybody, like young people, old people. Uh, they just like. It's such a icebreaker, and like everybody just looked and said, "Oh, what the hell's going on?" And they were just like, "Oh my God, it's a pop of girls." And so, so the, so the question is now: Are we going to change things up? No, we can't. You know, and this is this is the point, though. <laughs> Because is that, this, this this new song is definitely inferior. Yeah, it's not. It, it's harder to play. Also. <laughs> it is. It's more intense. It's a it's lot more intense. A lot more complicated. Yeah, and a, I just it doesn't it, does, it doesn't like sit with me as well. Uh, it's, you know, it's going to be a, that problem for everything, though. I I'm mean, sure. like you you take something iconic and then you just discard it for something new. You're going to be like, oh, it's not as good as the previous. This one. This is true. I, That's having true. Having said that, I still yeah. like the I, I like the new song. I mean, I've I've watched six episodes mm-hmm. of the new one. Uh, I've seen believe, I've seen four. Yeah. So after four listens, I'm still like I'm, I'm, mm. it's it's growing on me. Yeah. It's, it's it's okay. It's not it's not a bad song by any means. It's obviously not going to be like it's not a sing alongy. Yeah, it's not a. Sing-along-y. I don't I don't know the words. I can't sing you the tune. I like I saw four episodes yesterday. Four in a row. Who's got the power? You've got the power. <laughs> that's that's basically it. But it's good. It's got a great riff, and you know I like it. Right. And uh, but uh, you know coming back to the fact that you know when I v- used to play Pop of Girls and everybody look and literally that's what I was talking about. Like, everybody look is because there was an entire generation that went through that, and there was mm-hmm. young kids watching that who have grown up now, and there were like slightly younger kids than that who have watched all the reruns. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, when did this show? Uh, I think it ended in 2004 if I'm not mistaken and it had the original series yeah so it was maybe it's possibly from 1998 to 2004 because it had six seasons unless it, it was it six seasons it started in 90 it started that late that late yeah yeah in 98 wow yeah 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 really? it was that golden age right so and, and I'll tell you why it started late is because um so these guys I I'll just give a little history to this so Craig McCracken And Gennady uh, Tartakovsky, a guy who's obviously behind some of the amazing shows. Probably best known for Dexter. Dexter's yeah. Lab, Samurai Jack, uh, lesser known Symbionic Titan. Clone uh, Wars. Clone Wars. I mean, this guy is a, he's he's a, a, he's a legend, he's right? He's a mad genius. He's a mad genius. And uh, so these guys all studied together in college. And while they were in college is when they wrote these specs, you know, for, mm-hmm. and they designed this, this art and all that stuff. And so when they were all like hired, and this is the thing about uh, Cartoon Network, I don't even remember this, uh, but they have this thing called Water Cartoon Show. Yes. Okay. So Water right. Cartoon Show was, was kind that? of like their uh, 
pilot like their testing ground like sure. you know for 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 these cartoons so they did shorts uh, of uh, like shorts versions of of all these kind of cartoons and and feature on this and i think i don't know if this was on what a cartoon show but it was on something similar uh, i can't remember exactly what the name of it was uh, but uh, pop of girls was on it uh, you know dexter's featured on that first and dexter's lab was the first to get green lit from cartoon network so which is why they kind of uh, fully deserving i think i yeah. like I, it was arguably my favorite uh, yeah on dexter's cartoon lab. Network. it I might mean, very well have been my favorite yeah I can yeah. see why, but you know that's. I'm certain I liked it more. Than is it because you were? Is it because you were a boy? Is uh, it because you were a boy and you? I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean that. Because I've like never thought about that. Girls, I mean, started off as a as a very. It's like it's a girly show. It is a girly. It's show. a girly show. Yeah. Well, I loved it. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, de- I show, liked yeah. I liked Bob of Girls a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I. But I yeah, liked I think Dexter's was, a, Dexter's Dexter Lab a lot was more. cooler. Like in 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 the sense, I just appreciate the humor. The humor of Dexter was very different than Bob of Girls. It um, was. It, I don't know. If, I don't know if it was. I don't know. I guess the setting is is much different. Obviously, it's inc- it's, it's it's a very different show. I think yeah. like Dexter. It is himself, a very different the Dexter show. character. Like just Dexter himself. Yeah. Forget Dee Dee and forget Mandark and all that. Yeah. Dexter himself was a very. It was a, a yeah. It was a weird engaging show. character for me. Like the Powerpuff Girls. It's still a ki- uh, chill, more of a children's. It's far show. more of a kid. Yeah. Like it's far more yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, basic no, sure. in that in that level. I think what I like most about Powerpuff Girls were all the villains. And, yeah, the villains and, are and, great, and in Dexter's man. and in Dexter's lab, I liked. I love Dexter himself. I love Mandark, and I love Dee Dee. And I think just and the parents, dude, mom and dad. Are mom the and best. dad, they they were great. Like yeah. I loved the the robot mom versus yeah, the, super mom versus, super yeah. mom versus <laughs> robot. That was great. The musical episode to this day, dude, I still sing. It's so good. I yeah. still sing the musical episode to this day. Like I I remember most of that entire opera. It was yeah. beautiful. That, was, and that might very well have been the first opera I've heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> and like the, yeah, the, I remember Dexter doing some really really cool. Thing, like uh, I mean, they did that whole episode with omelette du fromage. Mm-hmm. It's so. I mean, it's so genius. I would bet my last buck that that for like ninety percent of at least Indian kids, that yeah. is like the first, if not French. the only French phrase that they know. <laughs> Outside du of bonjour, I think <laughs> omelette du fromage is yeah. probably the. the it's first so thing genius. It's like it's literally Inception that he goes through. Yeah, <laughs> it's so great. It's yeah. so good. So Dexter yeah. obviously had a had a different quality to it. Yeah. It was like more. I felt like it was more like. Sadistic, like it was. Yeah, like, it was more cynical. cynical and yeah, like, yeah. Just yeah, it was great. It was but awesome. the, but what I do love about Pop of Girls and why I mean that show has always stayed with me. Mm-hmm. So obviously the villains were so memorable. Yeah, I course. mean like they had a, such a great plethora of, of yeah. villains, and obviously Mojo Jojo has become like a he's just like a pop culture icon, you he know, is, just yeah, the yeah. way he speaks and the voice acting on that show was so brilliant because they had to do Absolutely. like a bizarre number of voices and mm-hmm. do a bizarre number of things. And I just, I, I just found it uh, just really, really interesting. I think on the schoolyard, on the school ground, everybody and their mom had a Mojo Jojo um, impersonation. impersonation. <laughs> everybody like attempted Mojo Jojo. Yeah, Mojo yeah. Jojo. And there was some really, I mean, and uh, and this is what I've been wondering about. I mean, like this is what been, I've been really appreciating about cartoons and why I still watch cartoons and why we're still watching cartoons as 26-year-olds, <laughs> you know, um, adults, so yeah. to speak. It's because, you know, you start watching these cartoons as kids and you you think that, oh, cool, you know, we're going to just, it's just, you know, it's clever and it's funny and it's it's cute. Mm-hmm. And, and But then they start to dig into the, the backstories. And I think this happens generally for all the animators. Also, when they realize, oh, okay, cool, we've done silly cartoons for like one season. What can we do next? And what they start to do is like do these like deeper backstories to I'm all sure, the yeah, characters. The, the writers they themselves need to feel exactly. satisfied about making something that they can actually be Ye- proud about. It's no longer like you can only do the cheap gags and yeah, cheap exactly. storylines for so long before you yourself sort of feel exactly. like okay, I'm writing just crap. And they for and a while. they and they bring it back now and then, obviously, yeah, because course, they want I mean, to keep it light. Yeah. But you know, the one perfect <clears> example of this, and I've said this, uh, I think I've said this before, but Adventure Time, this show which mm-hmm. is on Cartoon Network yeah, right now. Yeah. First of all, it's my one. Defense for anybody who says, "Oh man, cartoons are not good anymore. Cartoons used to be the best." At this time, when Dexter's sure. Lab and all this, like yeah, a lot yeah. of people love that era, and then have stopped watching cartoons. Mm-hmm. But cartoons are like almost, if not better than ever, right now oh, with Adventure Time, right? Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Uh, you know, Adventure Time, regular show, uh, Gravity Falls. Uh, so many really, really yeah. good cartoons. Uh, not even counting the DC and Marvel stuff that they yeah. put out, like so. We're not, even, we're not even talking about the Simpsons, which is still a uh, Simpsons. Going, yeah, f- you know, Family Guy. You know, South like Park. we're not even talking about. Uh, yeah. You know all that, like yeah. Uh, yeah. what was it, BoJack Horseman? You yeah. know, or you know yeah. Archer. I'm just talking about Cartoon Network, or you know, just 
kids cartoons are so loaded with you know meaning and and depth and like adventure time um, and and i'm sure pop of girls also started the same way it was like first season you just do all the cheap gags and everything mm-hmm. and then after that you dig into the backstory and then it becomes so much more meaningful for everybody who's watching it because you're just like wow now i really really give yeah. a damn about these characters yeah. especially i don't know if you remember this one episode which was about how mojo jojo is actually the pop of girls father Because he yeah, created them. I vaguely remember uh, this. So the, yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, he was a baby along with a, yeah, them. He's a baby. So he, he was he, in the lab when the yeah. He's a pet monkey of yes, Professor yeah, Utonium, yeah, yeah. and then like he's basically like you know he's just just a regular monkey and mm-hmm. he's a very loving monkey. But what happens is very uh, cute he, monkey in a diaper. Yeah, right? in a diaper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he goes and upsets the 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 equation with yeah. Chemical X. So he becomes responsible for Chemical X. Yeah, and in that he has an accident where he splits his skull open, which is why and his brain the just. Brain just explodes <laughs> <laughs> pops out and which is why he wears a mask so that was like a great episode was I was awesome. like wow that's amazing like that's the origin so story that's great origin story yeah. amazing yeah. And, I, and then you start to kind of like you you, you just like start to uh, dive deeper and deeper into these into mm-hmm. these great characters so I think I was you know, really I, 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 was, about, about I have it. a feeling that if uh, if you go back and you watch you re-watch your favorite cartoon from when you were a kid um, anything on the cartoon network you know particularly like uh, uh, top of my head if I think about maybe Top Swat Cats, Cats Swat Cats the Centurions Ed, whatever Ed, anything Ed, like yeah. that so if you especially Ed, Ed and Eddie actually <clears throat> if you twisted. if you go back and watch it now yeah. I feel like you you will definitely find things in there that you didn't notice as a kid because I feel like we've all we all have a sort of a turning point threshold yeah. in our lives right because when you're a kid up until you're a teenager you're watching these shows without any questioning of it definitely. and then you're a teenager and then you sort of you know mature and like think it through a bit more and you realize wait a minute there's a whole other world out there of like live action stuff that I should, can get into because it's real humans that I can connect with yeah. and look at so you get into that and so you put the cartoons aside yeah. and then if you go back to the cartoons now i feel like you'll appreciate a whole other set of things so yeah. like for example uh, completely unrelated to this uh, watching pop of girls for this episode years ago like i don't even know how long ago i sat and got i think about 300 episodes of looney tunes <laughs> right wow. which is which are just sitting on my hard drive and i occasionally very randomly will pull out a completely random episode because like they're all even like i have a photo a uh, continuity like i said like in terms of there's a story so you can literally just yeah exactly out, yeah. There, there's there's hardly any continuity to it so i would literally just play <laughs> any random episode episode number 372 go and i don't even know who's going to be in it or what and it's great obviously one cuz it's freaking looney tunes and it's amazing it's amazing but two, it's so funny just watching the stuff again so i i remember some episodes it's like oh yes and he's going to do that oh there it is i remember that joke but now i i see the 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 deeper meaning behind yeah. everything and I, and i sort of see you know a lot of different things that i didn't notice back yeah, then so just, i i would highly recommend watching, re-watching an old cartoon rewatching old cartoons just for, for the sake sure. obviously for nostalgia's sake but you will definitely find a lot You'll of it because so much more these cartoons it, yeah. while the kids shows much like you know your pixar's of today and they're, they're made by adults they're made by adults yeah. <laughs> put a lot of thought and time to it especially for a long running cartoon like it's one thing for like a for a cartoon that didn't go on for very long so it's just a cheap gag that's meant to like you know make you chuckle for a second but if it's a, if it's a show that's been going on for a while yeah there's every chance that the showrunners would have at some point said okay guys we need to make something of substance at some point and so they started doing that yeah and they they they've done it in a way that they've not lost the 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 you know the funny stuff like mm-hmm. it's still silly like in many ways yeah. but it, you have to be an adult to i guess appreciate what the like one deeper is yeah, behind the, the layers it. of the layer yeah. of it. like for example uh like i i, I mean i'm sure you like i'm sure there must be like academic papers on like courage the cowardly dog or something be. because it's like it's the, so what so they say is courage is, uh, it's, i mean it's that's how dogs his, uh, yeah, view of the world dog's view, yeah. and i was just like wow that's crazy uh, the moment i saw that you start watching the show again you're just like wow that's crazy this must have been a perfectly normal situation mm-hmm. but like just you know escalated really quickly in the mind of a of of a dog and yeah. this is like yeah so one of those uh, one of those good examples of especially in pop of girls is uh is the episode of the is the beatles homage uh, mm-hmm. to so, and that is like obviously so when i saw it as a kid i didn't get anything I didn't I literally didn't get anything because I didn't grow up listening to to a lot of Just, like uh, run music. run us run our listeners through that episode. So it, the episode is called The Beat Alls, okay? And I was just like, "Oh, okay, cool, The Beat Alls." And I just watched it as a kid. But then you realize that it's uh, so the story is <laughs> that uh four of these uh these four villains individually, Mojo Jojo, Fuzzy Lumpkins, uh him mm-hmm. and uh I think Princess. Yeah, so yeah. so the four of them. I hate Princess. Yeah, Princess is she's, the worst. She's easily my least she's favorite. She's the she's the evil pop-up girl. Yeah. Because she's, she's even just like 
like them. And there's yeah. a new in the with Pop Up Girl 2016. There's yeah. one episode where yeah. she. Anyways, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so basically, the four of them individually cannot beat the Pop Up Girls, mm-hmm. and they're just going through a bad, you know, run of yeah. you know unsuccessful attempts yeah. of trying to like rob banks or whatever it is. And so they finally decide that, you know, they they just happen to come together at one point. Come together <laughs> <laughs> at one point uh, where. Uh, So they all have different things. So Mojo Jojo has like these laser beams. Princess has something similar. Uh, Fuzzy Lumpkins throws a rock, which is the kind of the finishing move. And I think him does also something like stu- something stupid. Uh, he, he can like change his size uh, and yeah, all that. S- yeah, something like that. And so they 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 catch the pop girl, pop up girls in this one moment where they were like, okay, cool, we're gonna try and fight you. And they all do it like uh, systematically. They do mm-hmm. it one at a time. Mm-hmm. And the last, and they're all like. Caught and they're like, ah, what are you doing? And all Fuzzy does is like throw the rock, and it just silences everything. <laughs> and they just like look at each other and like, oh my god, did we just beat them? He's like, yeah, together we can be the beat. We can beat all of them. We can be the Beatles. <laughs> and so they go on this trip, and it's a montage of basically every single Beatles reference, mm-hmm. like. They could cram into this episode, like every line, pretty much, is a reference to the Beatles. Like they have a day in the life. Um, they have like um, uh, the, obviously le- yellow submarine is, is is planted somewhere in there. Uh, they, there's like a hard like even like the guy who uh, so uh, they keep beating the the pop up girls mm-hmm. and then there's obviously it's like now over to Sergeant Pepper who says <laughs> help. We need somebody help. <laughs> Not just anybody help. We need the pop-up girls, and it's just like it's just really funny and. And I think this is one of the great examples of how you need to kind of not you don't have to be an adult to enjoy. You just needed to have known the Beatles. And I, obviously, I was a kid, and I, after hearing the Beatles when I was in high school, mm-hmm. then I kind of watched the episode again mm-hmm. because obviously they do reruns. Sure. And then I just be like, ah, oh, dude, that yeah. is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so amazing. And f- so strange for like it's an American kids TV show to reference like the Beatles. I guess the Beatles were, were the Beatles I mean, sur- huge. Beatles you know. surpass yeah, most things everything. In life. Yeah, I Beatles mean, was yeah, was everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So I mean. Just amazing how they did that. It was just like one of the best episodes, uh, mm-hmm. definitely. That was that was hilarious. I mean, it was just like, and especially if you sometimes you watch it again and again, and mm-hmm. you get more and more references out of it because those mm-hmm. guys know their Beatles well so well. So we rewatched, not rewatched. We just saw the the new series just uh, just yesterday, pretty much. We just binged, yeah. and I, I used the term binged very lightly because they were these are now ten minute episodes. No, so they always they always, always eleven minutes. They're two. So how the the structure is two episodes together and a twenty two minute thing, and they're. Uh, Ah, that's each. okay. Yeah, because remember them being twenty minutes long. Yeah, it's like, always been that way. Okay, that makes a lot yeah. more so, sense. So I mean, we're watching um, it now. We don't, you know, the t- difference is we don't watch it like how you yeah, watch on exactly. TV, right? Of course, <laughs> we don't have we don't have ad breaks. We, we don't, don't have, have ad breaks. Like just watch yeah. episode at a time. Um, so we we just watched the. I watched the first four. They just managed to get six episodes in, and the first. Official episode. There was like a pre-aired episode as well, like episode zero, essentially. Which yeah. I saw as well. So they have like they had like shorts come out before. Yeah. The, just to prime it for right. Yeah. For so the very first episode, the very first two episodes actually were very uh, Buttercup centric, uh, yeah, centered, centric, centered, and um, don't ver- call me princess. Don't yeah. call me princess. <laughs> and then the the first the the, the pre-aired one uh, had Man Boy in it. Man uh, Boy, so funny. And so one one theme that I. Saw very very strongly, which was very reminiscent of the Rowdy Rough Boys yeah. from back in the day. Those Rowdy Rough Boys, yeah. who were like the one the of the boy- best episodes ever. Yeah, the boy, boy version of, of the Pop of Girls, right? Yeah, Rowdy so this, Rough so Boys. They like right off the bat with their with their comeback. The first two episodes are dedicated pretty much very blatantly to like female empowerment and be like, "Don't call me princess." and this man boy thinks he's all this because like he can grow his 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 special power. I loved it. His special it power so is he can grow a giant uh, beard, beard in like a second, and his beard has muscles, and his beard can like punch them. I mean, like it's so uh, funny though. Like uh, he's you know he says what I, he's like. I'm man boy. I'm I'm the power of a man in the size of a boy, <laughs> and he can grow a beard. And you know it's so funny. This this beard thing has before also been the 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 the, the symbol of yeah. manliness. Do you remember the Dexter's, Dexter's episode? episode? Yeah. Yeah, with the uh, Hank. Ha- uh, What's his name? Uh, Action Hank. Action Hank. You, you're so rugged. <laughs> yeah, he's so rugged. With yeah, the beard. and then Dexter like he makes a formula so he can grow he a beard, beard as well. <laughs> and like he go, he goes. He the same beard. Yeah, exactly way. the same color, same yeah. like curly thing. Yeah, um, and like he goes like to nightclubs or something like that. He like all the women are like yeah. all over him. Like ooh. And he, <laughs> they, they basically the end the episode saying it, that was the, the male version of it saying yeah. it's not about the beard you have on the outside. It's, it's the beard, beard you have on the inside. It's so good. It's just so good. Hilarious. Which is funny. Also, by the way, there's been a crossover between Dexter and. 
the uh, Papa's girls. Yeah, I, uh, it was uh, you know what was his name? The captain, the major, major glory, major glory, major, major glory was glory. He was on was on Papa's girls also. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, he but, was. But he Dexter was. was not on Papa. No, not Dexter. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. major glory, which kind of you know even they both kind of live in the suburbs also. It's very if, if you notice all Cartoon Network shows like mm-hmm. Ed, Ed and Eddie, mm-hmm. uh, Papa's girls, Dexter's Lab, all of them live in like this suburban area of yeah. US. I mean, like uh, just yeah, sub- sub- suburban USA. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just, Why do you think that was? Was that like was that a thing? City life was not like I don't know popular. What I don't know. It? I mean, like were kids only being raised in the suburbs? So I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of people that were that were in very much in the heart of the city. And like the names that come to mind, obviously Top Cat lived in an alley he in the middle of the city. Yeah, but that was the still Top the Cat crew. that was still the seven. Like the, uh, I don't know when that Top like Cat came out. Seventies, eighties, yeah, best, yeah, eighties probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, Well, who so who else was there? Like, do so, you remember? Um, because you know why? I'll tell you what. This one, uh, just one reference. I don't know. Sure. This doesn't happen in India, uh, I guess, as much. I didn't grow up here, but in Dubai, also, you know, it was everyone just lived. I mean, Dubai is so small; it doesn't sure. matter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in India, I know a lot of people who live in Pune. It's mm-hmm. like Pune. Uh, you know, Bombay is a city life. You can't escape that. Yeah. They're not real suburbs, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, the only reference I remember is like in Friends when they said, "Oh, you know, Chandler and Monica want to raise their kids in the suburbs yeah. because that's the thing to do. You don't raise sure. kids in the city." Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, "Oh, okay, cool. That's that's the thing, I suppose." No, that that is no that is very much thing that is li- that is quintessentially the American dream. So was having, that uh, like yeah, a having a house prevalent in, in the nineties? Ab- absolutely. That, that yeah. was prevent. That was prevalent. I mean, since. Like day one, I mean, okay. very much. It's a very fifties sort of thing as well. In that having two and a half, you know, ra- raising two and a half kids and a dog in the suburbs, and then you commute into the city right. for work and then you commute back because you go to the city in all the hustle bustle to get you know your work done, yeah. and then your home life, your family life is is green yeah, pastures so, and you know oh, cool. you know a green front lawn and a yeah. I guess remember like all Ed and Eddie was yeah. pretty much the. In fact, they did this whole episode on Ed and Eddie. I remember where they. Build a fake city like out of cardboard and stuff like that. Ed, I think Ed does it uh, just to kind of give the kids like this whole new experience. And all. he's such a like you know, oh, what was the word I'm looking for? But he was like he was not like Top Cat, you know. He's mm-hmm. just like a, a doer uh, of things, you know. And like he makes this entire city, and I was just like everyone's like, oh my god, what is this? It's so cool. It looks exactly like the city yeah. and stuff. And they were just so like primarily suburban, and I was just like, yeah. oh, that's a. Uh, such a big part of all these shows. Absolutely, I mean, uh, this is not a cartoon, but like you watch the Wonder Years, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. the Wonder Years was, was exactly yeah. that. They lived in they lived in the suburbs. Dad went to work in this yeah. sort of, you know, uh, they they rarely the ever showed you. Yeah, they rarely thing. ever showed you what Dad did because he yeah. goes in the city and he does city job stuff and he comes home and he's grumpy and you know antagonizes <laughs> Kevin <laughs> yeah, Arnold okay, yeah. because he's gone to the city <laughs> and the city sucks and it's like, ah, yeah, so everything. strange. That, though. I mean, that that's Americana one hundred and one. Essentially, I see. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. that's great. Okay, cool. I think we're going to take a short break. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what we do like and what we don't like about the new Powerpuff Girls and more. Stuff and things when we come back. It was rated Goregaon's most intelligent podcast. It was the best new podcast of the day when it was launched. And now, the irreverent brand of attempted humor and botched education is coming your way. You have many burning questions. So what is the Brexit? What do mathematicians do, man? I mean, introducing Simplified, a weekly podcast that deconstructs issues around you, such as what on earth is Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is just an other currency like the rupee or dollar. The difference here is it's a virtual currency. Do resolutions and cameras really matter? They think that just because a number is higher, what they're getting is actually more. And encryption. So. Encryption, okay, it's a process of encoding messages in such a fashion that only the intended recipient sees it in its intended format. Hosted by Narendra Shanoi, a very wise man who can't stop making PG Woodhouse references, and Deepa Gopalakrishnan, who calls himself Chuck, a madman who can't stop making poor jokes. Narendra, what do you call a forest where you find all the latest news? Uh oh, I don't have a good feeling about a topical that. rainforest. Follow Chuck and Arain as they scour Google and read Wikipedia for you and condense it into language you can understand. Simplify, helping you appear smarter to an audience that knows no different. Cool, we're back to the city of Townsville. <laughs> as we do, hey man, I forgot to I forgot to really uh, I really mm-hmm. wanted to mention this. So you know what the original name of the of the pop up girls was? What the whoop ass girls. <laughs> and Racy. obviously it's because he was drawing it in college so he must have wanted to make it like uh, sure like i guess even rick and morty you know mm-hmm. like was sta- sta- because you know the resemblance to uh 
Marty McFly and you know yeah. the what do you call it and Doc Doc Brown, Doc Brown. okay Doc yeah. Brown uh, so obviously so he made it as a, 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 a as it, it was a show called Doc and Marty mm-hmm. and it was way worse than what we already see in Rick and Morty which is already an adult show which is fine way worse and re- way like, uh, more profane profane okay, and explicit yeah. yeah yeah it was just it was just and similarly I'm sure so Wopass Girls was started as a he drew it on a birthday card for a friend and then sure. you know they kind of developed it and then obviously it turned itself into the pop of Girls hmm. so I was just like yeah we, we were talking about like how and I'm sure yeah, and you know Pixar does this a lot with like a lot of adult jokes within the 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 these you know so to speak like very clean cartoons but i don't know and this is what i found about the new pop of girls the the 2016 pop of girls mm-hmm. is that they're not straying too far from uh like they're not making it as kiddy as it was. Yes, and very much. And that's because, so. it's, like, it's you know, because it's just changing kids times. Kids have changed because man. I mean, like we. That's weird. So last week or a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the Jungle Book and how yeah. like this new version of the Jungle Book um, is very different, a lot scarier. Yeah, because lot I mean, scarier, it's lot. live action. It's very. I mean, we, hyper real. By the way, we've been saying yeah, live action a lot for this Jungle yeah, Book. It's, it's, but really it's not, not at all. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, but basically, is because yeah. that's what we. That's how you'll perceive it. Perceive it. Yeah. Um, so kudos to them. But yeah, what what I'm getting at is like even the Jungle Book, right? So a lot of kids, millions of kids today will grow up seeing this as the Jungle Book and maybe have never seen the original cartoon. Uh, yeah. And so what we were used to, I mean, like, like, I, like my biggest uh, comment about that film was that I had seen, I'd rewatched the cartoon yeah. right before seeing it. So like I was comparing the two and I was like, this, this new one isn't as whimsical. Yeah. But then that's also most kids things these days are not, not as whimsical, whimsical. The uh, noise, which is which is fine because yeah. it's a changing of times so one example yeah. that i that i noted down about one particular episode that uh, i think was episode 2 was where uh, they played death ball death ball death yeah death ball so death there were these so these other girls dodgeball ball on like crack yeah, dodgeball <laughs> on crack and yeah. a lot of death right yeah, yeah. so the interesting thing is i mean it followed a very simil- simple and similar arc as a lot of the episodes of powerpuff girls where in which buttercup being buttercup is the one that gets attracted to death ball and blossom and buttercup <laughs> like what's death ball and then she's like this is amazing i'm gonna play death ball she I'm basically gonna... yeah and she you know she does that she gets stuff. Involved with that. and then one one way or the other the two girls blossom and buttercup get a uh, blossom and uh bubbles get beat up by the bad guy <laughs> of the episode yeah and then buttercup's like oh no i need to save my save my sisters so she comes back and saves the day right yeah. and then once she saved the day you would think that she would apologize be like oh i'm sorry guys i was busy playing death ball i guess i shouldn't play death ball anymore it's like yeah we should be sisters and we should be friends and you yeah. should support each other which would be perfectly a perfectly fine ending I as guess. it always is but, but in the but 90s now, yeah. <laughs> in the 90s but now she's like hey i saved you guys i'm so sorry i was away and they're like no it's cool at least you're back now should we all play death ball? Let's all play death ball, and then that's how the episode ends with everybody playing death ball. I'm just, I mean, which is so, yeah, it's not the biggest, you know, like yeah. oh my god moment, but just the fact that they all embraced the thing that sh- that drove Buttercup away. But that's a you know good I mean? thing. I mean, so one of the criticisms of this show, and we have not seen all eleven episodes, so I don't know what the ratio breakup is. But in the original show, there was always like like some monster some kaiju mm-hmm. which was and that's the that's the type of show that it was it's mm-hmm. obviously it's heavily based on anime yeah. and this whole kaiju thing it's it's there's a name for it, it's called tuk tuka to to cut or something yeah it's it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it's a word for it's like word. these kind of sure. arcs sure, of these sure. you know where you know monsters appear and you have to beat them defeat mm-hmm. them so a lot of anime is based on that so uh, one of the criticisms is that you know like unlike the previous uh, version of the show the original there was not that much monster fighting yeah as a as a big really part of the show not, really and like not. it it kind of deviates into these other other th- which i'm actually okay with but mm-hmm. a lot of uh, I, a lot of female journalists have said but that is the most important part of the show is that these little girls are not afraid to fight monsters yeah. and that's like a big thing and she's not shy away from that mm-hmm. and but obviously they're only 11 episodes in and while yeah. I, I i still like that they're doing like random stuff like i <laughs> don't okay so one of, i think this was the first episode but um like and this is what i miss but i also like that they've updated it like in the first one we saw you know the beatles was such a big influence yeah, and yeah. now craig mccack is not obviously involved with this yeah. show he's given it his blessing mm-hmm. but this one had its own variation of like pop culture like it the had this uber reference yeah, i love the uber reference. uber reference was great yeah. uh, but like it had this thing oh yeah calling the monster yeah. through uber yeah cuz like the, the, the monster beats up the girls and then cuz princess princess is like yeah. i need i need a monster so she like gets on her phone <laughs> cut to That's a random great. dude in a car picks up the phone it's like oh 
somebody's <laughs> calling the monster and then like he just morphs into a gigantic monster comes by beats up the girls and the moment he's and done and then he's just like that was a pretty good fight i think i deserve a four star rating at least okay bye <laughs> it's like what <laughs> So it good. was great. It was awesome. That was a great reference. Obviously, but the first one there's a uh, there's a boy band called Sensitive Thugs. Okay, I don't okay. Know, did you see this? It's like no, uh, I think this so, is one so, of the later ones. I haven't seen. No, this it's yet. I think it's the first or oh, episode zero, or whatever. So there's this one boy band. Um, who they're all in love with and that basically that's the whole episode is that there's a there tickets to win for sensitive thugs which is like the one direction but they're like yeah we this next song is called i love you so much because of emotions but i'm also really cool about it like and, you know and like a tear kind of falls out of sure, his eye and sure. it's just like it's so funny that you know that kind of riffing on all these like boy mm-hmm. bands something again that has su- suddenly made a r- resurgence like you know backstreet boys back in the 90s and mm-hmm. now we have like one direction and stuff yeah i mean they've they've had to adapt and change for the and times it's and so it's so funny it's and great. and the whole episode is about how Bubbles wins two tickets and she doesn't know who to take with her and uh, like and they go yeah. and fight and ev- both Bubbles uh, Blossom and Buttercup are fighting for that ticket and it's just yeah. like it was just really funny that the Uber kind of reference I loved is there was so one good. the I think it was episode three that was uh, basically just a remake of The Hangover. Yeah, that was yeah, great. yeah, yeah. They got it was the hangover. They, they, right? they, it was literally yeah. the hangover. They they got they got drunk on candy the night before. They it was called the sleepover, the stayover. The sl- it was called, yeah, it was called the, the, the stayover is the episode. Yeah, yeah they have a slumber party. So they have party. a slumber party, and then they <laughs> they they get high on candy, and they binge on that, and then they wake up the next morning is when it starts, and it's just a whole flashback episode. And they want to go on the rocktopus. The, the rocktopus. <laughs> this is great. really cool. Yeah, and so I mean. I I think that you probably won't see a Beatles reference anytime soon. Yeah, I don't think we'll see um, anything cla- as classic as that. Because it's not it's no longer as relevant. I mean, maybe unfortunately but when, when, when was the Beatles relevant in the 90s for for kids at that point? Like It was it was relevant for I think the their the parents for for us for like for, for, the, for par- the adults for the adults to watch. Oh, like, yeah, likewise with this like say the hangover thing. Any adult that watches this is going to see blatant hangover reference to it. That's true. The kid will not see. The kid is going to see a funny episode, and that's Actually, all that matters you know to the kid. So I maybe think the kid is going to watch the hangover reference also, and that's that's the whole point. Is yeah. that I feel like. You know that's sh- not shying away from making the jokes like lesser like they're still silly like yeah, it's still really silly but yeah. it's not like kiddie friendly you know it's like, not like babyish anymore it's not like a really really small kid uh, yeah they, I guess they could watch it but there's a lot of lines and dialogue that is just you know like but, uh, but, but they're masked I mean like a five year old or a six year old is not going to get some of the more uh, for you know, example there's this one stuff. episode Racism. called Painbow I don't know if you saw that no, one I haven't seen that okay one. so uh, Painbow is about uh, it's like this uh, they're just sitting in class and there's still an, a lesson in all of this okay, sure. so they're sitting in class and Miss Keen is there it's the first appearance mm-hmm. in this in this show and uh, she says oh you know I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna teach you something I'm gonna do something really cool in class today and Buttercup's like oh what is it gonna be and she just dresses up as like a wizard and says oh we're gonna be I'm the spelling wizard or something and she mm-hmm. starts to kind of uh, teach them lessons and Buttercup's just fried and keeps making fun of Miss Keen keeps making fun of her mm-hmm. and then until suddenly a rainbow in the sky appears and like everybody starts to lose their shit it's crazy like everyone's like becomes happy and weird like oh my god i just want to hug you i just want to laugh and play <laughs> and all this stuff and they start going like their eyes become all weird right. and rainbowy yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. and like uh, everyone just gets distracted except for the pop of girls and so they fly up to the rainbow and they meet this uh, this creature who's a panda and I guess it's like this based on these memes you know where this panda with rainbow things coming out of its like butt you know it's like I don't know if you've seen these <laughs> what these, meme these, is that? these crazy memes right. you know cat sure. memes they have sure. all these okay. rainbow things yeah. and stuff yeah. so uh, this is based on that but you know so they go into this rainbow world where this guy's just like uh, this panda's just like I just want everybody to have fun and because of that like accidents are happening people are like like dying but they're oh, still happy about it it's right, like really yeah. weird oh, and dark and like people are just crashing into each other and like he goes and then you see and this world which is like in the sky or this rainbow world which is like I don't know it just felt like everybody was on LSD mm. and it felt like Tomorrowland you know ah. like that was the whole like kind of I, I guess was the thought behind it because sure. it was so like, it was so trippy mm-hmm. at the same time it's like hey everybody's all happy and stuff and I was just like dude this is LSD <laughs> somebody's nice. tripping on, on something yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know it was just like I was watching I was like wow is it Am I, know, am I wrong in assuming that or but, is it just that's that, probably that, it I don't think this is not the first time that this sort of like drug induced haze has been, been a know, big part of cartoons of things. Yeah. The, uh, cartoons in general but also I mean Pop of Cults because I think every episode with him in it yeah. is just a, a, a psychedelic trip because yeah. like he is such a psychedelic character like his voice yeah, his modulation androgynous kind of androgynous thing, like, you know he goes from his really whimsical like hello 
people to like, yeah. like yeah. you know he can change his size and all this stuff yeah, he and he can put a spell on people and yeah, all these, yeah. so like it i think pop cults has always had a, had a long history with psychedelics and yeah. i would bet that mr <laughs> uh tartakovsky uh, has uh, and crack him crack him yeah, yeah, yeah did some they, had, they, had some fun in they must have done they definitely some had some fun in college the, i mean um, that's what a lot of people say about adventure time and they, and they keep saying oh man it's just a trip it's just a trip actually it's a great cartoon there's so much mythology in that i really want to do an episode yeah. yeah and it's a tri- it's yeah. a trip yeah we will we'll eventually uh, get to do an episode time. on that yeah. but so i want to talk about just the the approach to bringing this show back much like how a lot of shows are coming back now i mean like this we've talked about this so many times that this is now we're in the age of reboots and the age of yeah. you know resurrecting stuff so a recent reboot that you know i loved a lot which was very <laughs> contested opinion with a lot of people is I love the full house the full house thing, yeah right yeah. and what I what I particularly contested. liked about that which I will say is that it's the only reboot that I've seen which is that stayed is you said incredibly right? sorry stayed to its original kind of very much stayed to its original thing but it's also the most meta about the fact that it's yeah, a reboot the very true. first episode I saw the first episode the yeah, very first episode I think is 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 great as a first episode for a reboot because I think upon just watching that first episode you can formulate an opinion as to whether or not you will enjoy this or hate it because I agree. I it agree. is so self aware of it that I love the fact that everything it sort of it threw everything at you in one go so that everything beyond that could just be the new show. Okay. So what I what so I what I was saying what, that after episode 1 they're mm-hmm. not as self-referential like No, they are. They are self self-referential not nearly as much and it's like in the first episode everybody comes back. Yeah, everybody there, like yeah. they talk directly into the camera. Yeah, they, and they wait also. They wait they talk about they talk stuff. about Mary Kate Nashley directly. They yeah. talk about that they talk about everything that we know about Full House yeah. being a reboot. So they Because get that, they get that off your they get that off their chest yeah. so that henceforth basically the the formula that they follow is that every couple episodes they will have a cameo appearance from one of the original characters like Danny will come back every for like one right. like for like five minutes in one episode Joey will come back for five minutes in another episode and that's it but the rest of that episode will be about the new kids and you know them being moms yeah yeah so that's true so in this like so with Powerpuff Girls i was expecting to see More. a lot more of the old stuff coming back but you think but like but they're, they're letting it go like they're sort of you know one episode is yeah in terms has of nobody uh, old in, one episode in terms has of mojo. continuity i don't know if this is a, i don't know if this is a sequel or, or like is is this continuing from the original it's just continuing because i mean it's they don't have to like everybody's the same age everything is exactly the same yeah, I guess. the characters are the same because it being a complete work of fiction where you can control every single element i mean with full house being real yeah, people real you people have to address yeah. the fact that everybody's you Aging, know yes. 20 years old or whatever <laughs> it is um so with this one i was expecting to at least see some familiar faces often enough and it's it's very infrequent i mean uh, yeah. mojo when mojo came in like episode 2 he was there yeah. for like literally like a second he was there for like 60 seconds yeah he was that. just there in the stay over right yeah, he, he was just, just like he a cameo yeah so, so i saw him and i was like yeah mojo i was like cuz he's you know like most people i think but he's I my guess favorite guy think about it this way though think about it this way it's just that you know i guess people are so familiar with these characters i actually like that they're just using that it's kind of like what marvel is doing with like throwing the hulk or in Ragnarok or mm-hmm. he might be a principal character or but like m- maybe like throwing Falcon into Ant-Man is this that now we're familiar with this you know yeah. this this cast universe. right yeah this universe yeah. and the and the the, li- the list of characters yeah. and we can just use them now sparingly we don't have to dedicate an entire episode where like i think people have seen enough episodes where Mojo Jojo is the villain and he's trying to take over stuff unless there's something Absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, there's something uh, really really different about how he's doing it or or, or basically where Mojo Jojo is a hero and they are the w- villains in some kind of weird freaky friday kind of w- mm-hmm. w- version then we don't need to see where mojo is kind of like the principal villain like what we'd like to see him now i actually like that he was just like in this episode of the same where he was just like trying to break into their house so and you know pizza, yeah. and just you know um, just eat pizza yeah but that's so, it but what what i think though is going to happen is um definitely with this first season they'll i would imagine they'll bring back all your favorite characters in some capacity or there some more than others yeah. but what's going to happen at least for the entire first season i think is that i'm oh. going to keep getting reminded of the fact that this is uh, a reboot of it because they're going to bleed it out in that way they're going to like give you little tidbits of like and yeah. here's a few lines for the mayor here's a few lines so for the cerebellum saying- rather than if they did like guess what full house basically did where in which you just get it out of the way here's the reboot we're going to give you all your jokes and your yeah. one-liners we're going to get that done and now we can focus on the future so with this it's one true. 
I'm going to keep thinking, I mean, uh, for better or for worse, that's that's the dilemma. For better or for worse, I'm going to keep getting reminded of the fact that yeah. this is not just the continuing adventures of, this is the continuing adventures of a, of a, like a version 2.0. Version 2.0, pretty you know? much. No, and uh, obviously, so I, I mean, if you think about it this way, so there are two ways of looking at it. One is that I don't know if they are making, uh, they're trying to make their own mark. And like the, these, these are the new creators, right? Ne- uh, uh, Chris, Chris Boyle I think mm-hmm. his name is yeah. and like uh, he's trying to uh, these two directors are trying to make their own mark on, on Pop of Girls while at the same time you know trying to keep it like reminiscent of for anybody who's coming back uh, mm-hmm. as a viewer at the same time they want to give kids like you know a, a, a newer version of, of, of Pop of Girls and like so it's not just like you know I think that's not enough anymore Like to just have a monster Come in and you beat up The monster and it's done Right Not that the original Did that anyway They still had yeah, a lot of a lot Subverted kind it, yeah. of uh, Different types of episodes But in this one It's like I don't know In the six episodes That we've seen We've not seen Any old character Be the main villain Right You know Well a princess I guess Well princess a sure bit. But, but I mean no, But let's be honest Nobody, nobody cares about princess nobody, no, I mean, <laughs> She's not the biggest Princess uh, was the I mean like Not the worst She's she the weakest like, she, She's the weakest character But like she's also annoying You know she, You don't love her as a character Like yeah, how you love Mojo she's not, a, she's not a good character Yeah She's not a well done character And that like I, just, uh, I don't know I wouldn't like I would never have remembered her Had I not I mean uh, if she was if I would not miss her at all Yeah we would miss her But like yeah. she wasn't I, I guess she was like An important character In the sense that she was like that stuck up snobbish like rich sure. kid you know that's it yeah, yeah that was, it, was, it was an interesting take on it yeah. Uh, but yeah we've not seen um, like Fuzzy Lumpkin's return just yet mm-hmm. I don't know how many episodes so Cartoon Network usually does like maybe 40 episodes per season mm-hmm. uh, so uh, I think I mean we're only like 11 down so there's like yeah. still three quarters how of the long has it been since uh, we've seen them since seen new episodes of Bible <sighs> okay, so at least two, so 2004 is when the last so season it's been 20 years more but, than uh, right 20 years no, 2004 oh, ten, 10 years <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not yet just no. <laughs> not yet uh, but yeah they're close to like I mean uh, what 12 years I guess yeah 12, yeah, 12 yeah. years but since 12 years. The, yeah. but in between there were different versions of video games there was the animated film of that course, came out yeah. there was Powerpuff Girl Z mm-hmm. okay or Z yeah. <laughs> which was the anime version again that was like a full like a proper version yeah. and then they did that Dance Pants t- which was a 2014 anniversary episode mm-hmm. where they got Ringo Starr to be in it as a character called Fibonacci Sequins. <laughs> it was great. No, and it was just like a designer who wore, who wore all these sequins and all. It was just really funny, dude. <laughs> and fucking like he, Ringo Starr. He, he is yeah. a very shiny yeah. individual with his costume choices. Yeah. yeah, it was In great. general. It was great. It was great to have, especially since I know that, you know, we've referenced that the Beatles was a big part yeah. of it. Cool. So, so who, yeah, man. Who else? Uh, so, who else uh, can we look forward to being rebooted in the Cartoon Network universe? Because so they have a lot funny. coming out. Right? Uh, now, this year, they've, I mean, I completely lost my shit when they said that, uh, you know, Samurai Jack is coming mm-hmm. back. Because even in that, like, two second motion graphics poster, like, you know, it was just like a moving poster, mm-hmm. it just showed the silhouette of Samurai Jack, but he doesn't look, he looks like he's wearing armor now. Yeah. And he's like, it's like, and it's basically, so why I'm more excited about Samurai Jack, particularly. Uh, and maybe even SWAT Cats, which is the is the third show, which is coming back. What's called Re- SWAT Cats Reb uh, Re- Renegade Revolution, something like that. Something like that. <laughs> Re- anyway, Renegade probably. Whatever. Yeah. So Samurai Jack is because that was a proper storyline, and that was a proper. Yeah, they con. they intentionally left it on a cliffhanger. Yeah, they did, and there was some bits resolved, I believe, in a comic book, which I have come surprised I haven't I haven't read. Uh, but like, I d- it was still not resolved. Like, for all intents and purposes, everyone yeah. on Reddit. It's not resolved, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, the great question has been uh, to Tarakovsky, who's been, like, uh, uh, busy with, you know, he signed a three-picture deal with Sony, mm-hmm. which actually makes me question whether he's really going to be directly involved. I'm sure he will be, because this is his baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so, he was doing, you know, he did uh, Hotel Transylvania. There was that Adam Sandler movie. It was an animated film that came out from Sony Pictures. So, he directed that, and he directed the sequel as well. And now, his third picture with Sony, and I guess this is his last, is uh, what he's probably working on right now is the Popeye movie the animated movie which oh, looks wow. really great like mm. the animation looks they did like a kind of a teaser uh, like a bit from it like a sizzle reel and looks amazing yeah is so, it the, like 2D classic animation so it's not it's 3D it's like oh it's like it's it's 3D but it looks exactly like the characters it's like how they've done the Snoopy film like they've done oh, it like 3D-ish right. oh, nice. versions okay, of okay. like 2D so it looks right. great That's so cool. I guess that like post that he's gonna be back involved and there's probably working on 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 Samurai Jack right now, which sure. is great because it ends like you know so like it ends with him not getting back to the past, you know, as Will I Am says <laughs> in the in the title song. Uh, oh, but yeah, <clears throat> so he doesn't get back, and 
he uh, and his feud with Aku is not over, and like that's what has left like everybody with sleepless nights, and and so we're really excited to for Samurai Jack to come Do back. Do we know much about SWAT cats? SWAT cats. I haven't. I haven't. <coughs> seen no, nothing much yet. About I, that I, at I only all. saw one poster. That's yeah, it. that's yeah, all. Just I saw. the one it's poster. It's just that it's coming back. And the uh, did it, was it just me or does the art look slightly different? It, it does. Look, it looks a little. I mean, the, like all of it, they've. You know, the pop of girls is still. It looks like 1080p versions of the it previous looks like ten, show. Yeah, it looks like 1080p versions of the that previous show. That was hand drawn, and this looks like. Yeah, I mean, the, I'm sure this is hand drawn, but it looks like digitally. No, this, yeah, this this I feel like looks like it was made in. Um, yeah. Adobe Illustrator, much like. <laughs> yeah. uh, much like the PBS sequences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Batman versus Superman. If you listen to the Adobe our, uh, Illustrator if you files. To Batman Superman. I'm sure episode, no, they all saw the Illustrator files of the Flash the and yes, he, right. he designed all their logos for them. <laughs> that was what I read somewhere. It's like he he's so so nicely just giving that's them true. their, their the, yeah, icon, the their vectors. There, right? yeah. oh, <laughs> he's like, that's... Flash, what would be a good icon for Flash? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, lightning bolt. Oh, that's oh, so that fun. I wonder so how stupid. that's going to work anyway. So Let's not even. So <laughs> There's um, this one moment where in Power of Girls also where she's like, where she's trying to get a unicorn. <laughs> okay, it can pop, Bubbles is trying to get it. And when she's not getting it, she's like, oh my God, I can't. I just can't and I can't even and Buttercup is like uh, you can't even what and Blossom is just like no no she just can't even <laughs> 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 it's just really funny uh, I love I love all those uh, those little updates to like there's so many mannerisms which are so contemporary which are not yeah. just in Pop of Girls yeah. so I think that's what I really love about Pop of Girls which you can see in Pop of Girls and I guess the inevitable Dexter's Lab reboot. Sure, it's gonna happen. It's I gonna see. happen. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, at this point, I feel like I'm not surprised anymore. I don't think I'm happy. I, I can't like you cannot fight the fact that everything is getting rebooted anymore and everything yeah, is but, getting uh, you know up- it, it, updated. Which if is, it gets updated, I mean, see, like I could have lived without a pop of girls. Yeah, reboot. Absolutely. I could have, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Samurai Jack, no. Like <laughs> important for it to be concluded. That's because yeah, that actually yeah. has a proper narrative yeah, that is yeah. incomplete. Like SWAT Cats doesn't have like nobody. <sighs> I can't remember the finale. Was but there can, a finale? There were only two seasons of SWAT Cats. Yeah, right? so like, but I would have no... loved to. Uh, I mean, like, I think SWAT Cats what it didn't do was really dive into like more personal kind yeah. of like I mean their their relationship was always like a thing but yeah. like it was more about the action and the fighting right. but now if they do SWAT cats again I would love to see the they, the, the backstories yeah. they probably will they probably yeah. will that get a bit great. more into it because, because there's still more of a story element there yeah because they, they, they need to satisfy us as well us yeah. being people that grew up with it and w- are now sort of we'll, get, guess, we'll yeah. get tired very quickly if, we, if it's the exact same thing the action will be just the same because it'll impress Kids that will be the same age that we were when we first saw and the it. cool gadgets and everything. Yeah, yeah so yeah, that's yeah. definitely they gonna have be that. that. So they, yeah. I'm sure that they will, much like the Papa Cults are starting to do, yeah. get into an actual narrative of some yeah. sort and like give you some that's depth true. into yeah. character. So it's a welcome, it's a welcome comeback. Welcome, yeah, I guess. welcome, welcome back. Yeah, right. That's true. That, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Cool. Cool. So I don't know when the release dates are for for these. Yeah. Uh, just yet. I think so. Papa Cults is back on Cartoon Network. I think Samurai Jack is later on this year, and I think Swat Cats is also, also yeah, yeah. sometime like late later on this yeah. year. So cool, man! Lots of good cartoons. That's always great. Uh, I love that. Uh, and cartoons need to be taken seriously. That's my only thing. Mm-hmm. That I, because we need to justify why two twenty-six year olds <laughs> are still watching Pop of Gold yeah. all the time. Cool. So we're gonna take a short break, and then we're gonna get into some random news. Random stuff. Hey guys, this is Malika Singhania, co-founder of the blog Stylogram, where we cover trends, fashion forecasts, celebrity style, tips and tricks, and lots more cool stuff. So tune in every Thursday to the Stylogram podcast, your weekly style telegram, giving you the latest fashion and beauty stories that are relevant to you. You can also subscribe to our show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Audio Boom, or any other local podcast app. See you soon. Generator. All right, so we're back with uh, random, random news stuff. generator. What do you got? Okay, cool. I don't know which one is is cooler. Okay, but Jumanji remake. Oh yeah, I've heard about this. <laughs> Who's in guess, it? Who's in it? Guess who is linked to be in it? Wait, 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 wait. I, I'm see if I remember. <laughs> and I'm also like cross my fingers because I hope I'm right with this one. Is it? It's two the- actors who are in a movie also, which is coming out this summer. Oh, comedy duo. Oh. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Uh, it's it's one of my favorites. Ever. It's The Rock. <laughs> yes, yes the, rock the Rock is one of them. Who's the other one? Yeah. Who's the other one? And it's Kevin Hart. Yes, that's yeah, right. So, yes, do, I remember, oh, so they are linked I'm to so it. There's no that. confirmation. 
Uh, because uh, no I mean, confirmation about them being in it. Yeah, or the, yeah. The casting the movie. Is, is, the movie is definitely happening. Yeah, the movie's the casting is underway. Okay. So it's supposed to be. It has a release date also. Oh. Of July twenty eighth, twenty seventeen, which is next year. Damn. Nice. That's crazy. Wait. Right? So is it a sequel or a? It's r- just a um, retelling of it, or I hope it's the new. Ta- they say it's a new take. Uh, and I don't know. Take. I don't know. Okay. So just. Another version of the same movie. Oh no, dude! It's got. Oh, but there's no Robin Williams anymore. Yeah, I mean. Oh my that, god! That, that just that, breaks that, my heart. Yeah, that's. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. You know, he was gonna he was gonna voice the BFG. What really? Yeah. Oh damn. He was going to, and then that happened. Oh gosh. Yeah. That was a crushing yeah. like blow, man. That yeah. was that was ter- that's that's tragic. Mm-hmm. But like Jumanji, man, it's like one of my favorite films like ever as a kid. Do you think? Uh, Kir- do you think uh, Kirsten Dunst will make a cameo? Uh, yeah, like, this <laughs> oh, much. Yeah, they have to. Like, yeah. she has who's, to. Who's the guy? Who's the boy? Some kid, man. He had such. It's so funny though. He was one of those guys who was in like every movie in the eighties. Like, he, oh, yeah? He, 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 yeah, like he, but he, no, he, he was, was one of those faces. Nineties was ninety something. Yeah, like I think I could be completely wrong, but like. I think it was the same guy that was in Small Soldiers. Remember that movie? Yeah, I love that movie. That was such a fun With, movie. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. Was in he was the main villain. He was the main antagonist. The the, the soldier. He was the voice of them. The voice of yeah. the soldier. Yeah, yeah. And the dad, the kid's dad, the kid who bought the toys. Yeah, yeah. He was. He's the dad that's in uh, like Transformers. He's like Shia LaBeouf. Oh yeah, dad. yeah, Shia LaBeouf's dad. And yeah, so yeah. that, so that, I think that established that dad, whatever his name, whatever his name is, that as, actor, as dad. For like yeah. <laughs> all all these suburban you know these movies, movies yeah. where like the kid gets into trouble and yeah. like he has a very strong but father figure. Funny, he's always dad. He's always that guy. Funny, you know who avoided being dad? Uh, in Stuart Little, the father is Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie. Yeah, yeah. Of and he just he just he's amazing. Escaped that. So funny. He Hugh Laurie is the father, and Michael J. Fox was Stuart Little. That's crazy, right? This is true. That it's is very so young. crazy. Is very so yeah, man. But like, I love Jumanji as a kid. I love Robin Williams, obviously, and that's like one of my yeah. favorite because I had it on VHS. I remember just rewatching it over and over again. And it was just like yeah, a I've cool a game. Times, it was fun. It was based on a board game, actually. Yeah, such a great movie. So really, really good. And I wonder what they would do with it. I mean, it'll be much funnier because the original Jumanji is not as it's a funny movie, but mm-hmm. it's kind of like. Darkish. It is a little dark. Yeah, it was. That's what I liked about it. It was like it. it sort of walks that fine line. Fine, like, really well. Yeah. Well, like I remember the balanced, first time I yeah. saw it, I was so I was very very young, and I remember like some parts scary. get scary. Some yeah, parts it was scary. quite scary. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. Especially like I mean the guy who was chasing them. Uh, what's yeah. his name? That that, that little that, uh, that I mean that little. Uh, he's like that British kind of soldier. Ah, yeah, the hunter. The, the hunter. Yeah, yeah with the yeah. with the mustache and everything. Very reminiscent of. Uh, Blanking Shere on Khan. his name, <laughs> George Khan. Sanders. No, I'm blanking on his name from Lost World. Uh, you, you can keep your fee. I just want to mail a buck. Uh, Pete Postlethwaite. Yeah, yeah. The that guy, guy plays the father in Inception. He plays. Uh, he's in the father in Inception. He plays the one who's dying. Right. Uh, this one's dad. Um, who's dead? Uh, psh, the guy, the uh, Killian Murphy's father, who he has to make uh, amends yes, with. Pete Postlethwaite. Yeah, right. he passed away he recently. Pass also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, he's was, a, I was really hoping he would have been in Jurassic World. Yeah, because no, like, he's, he's great. Because he just walks away into the distance at the end of Lost yeah, yeah. World. I was like, no, he's, he's awesome. And he he becomes an he's an awesome character. You he's realize in character. the Lost he's World, such yeah. a great character. Yeah. But speaking of, I mean, so this is I have something else uh, for us uh, random news. But uh, speaking of um, old movies coming back and reboots with with brilliant casting. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. Hoping to be in in Men in Black twenty three. Oh the yeah, Jump Street Jump Men Street. in Black crossover. Dude, are you excited? I'm I, I am super so excited I'm because so pumped. I feel like. Men in Black Four was not gonna cut it. Like as in, yeah, like, nobody Men want, Black, Men nobody Black Three was that. was yeah. nice actually. I did enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I love Josh Brolin. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, I, I was like, what are they gonna do like next? Right? Yeah, uh, and I, and I think both of those both of those franchises <laughs> are so lighthearted that like nobody it takes doesn't them matter. too seriously. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. And, like everyone was like, why are you doing this? This is so dumb. Right. Hollywood has run out of ideas. I was like, quite the contrary. This is like genius. This is a, this is a brilliant <laughs> cheap is, idea. Yeah, it's a brilliant. As far cheap as cheap idea. ideas go, this is a and the, br- no, awesome one. And the fact that they could green light this is mm-hmm. like fantastic. It's just like you know, hey, what could we do that would be fun? Potentially, like right, as right, a right. joke, yeah. you know, like you know, this this was thought up in a room that was like yeah. smoke filled with and somebody like two in the morning, just like, hey, what if, and, and then just like just no, ran with no, it. No, no crossover films like this have been done, right? Yeah, like, this is when bizarre. Was, like, when was the last time we saw like two completely different franchises owned by the same company? Yeah, which is I guess Paramount or Sony. I'm not sure. Yeah. 
Uh, but just went ahead and did this, man. And it's just, it's like, sure, why not, man? Yeah. Why and the I, hell I don't, not? I don't know if the, I don't know if the casting has been confirmed, but I mean, if if we're assuming that both the duos are back, which I yeah. guess they should be, and if Ice Cube is back as well, Ice then all I all I can imagine it being Wait, was Ice Cube in Men in Black also. Was, no, no, was no, any no. actor in both films? Not that I can. Th- Thing. Because no. I could totally imagine him with Rip Torn like being one of the Men in Black. No, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they'll. Be. But uh, what I so I was trying to think of like what the storyline could be because I don't think much, if anything, has been revealed about it. But do you remember the the you remember the ending of Jump Street Two, right? What? Yeah, twenty uh, two Jump Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 it's basically the, the title posters? cards of yeah, like yeah. all the of sequels. sequels. And sequels. Yeah. So I guess um, this is that's how it, they must have spun this off. Like, I, so I was thinking that uh, basically a good way to work them in is that I mean. So the two of them are cops, right? Jonah Hill and Tatum are, are, yeah, yeah. are p- simple police officers, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, obviously, Tommy Lee has had his retirement already once, and so he's getting old. Jay oh, is now a, older. I, I wish so they had a way thinking, of getting just Josh Berlin and like Tom uh, Will Smith to be the like. I love Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee has to be there because he, I I really want to see him <laughs> face off against Ice Cube. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a snarky <laughs> comment off. Like that would just be to see yeah, them riff off great. each other. It would, it would be, be great. great. But so I was thinking. I, w- I would hope that it's basically going to be something along the lines of J and K need to recruit uh, Jonah Hill and um, Channing Tatum. Yeah. And do you think this is going to be R-rated? Yeah, sure. But it's Actually, Men in Black, Black, Black was exactly, not... Exactly, right? Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm, confident, been, I'm confident Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum's jobs to, like, to do a great job even in a clean movie. So I'm sure I, they can do they, it. They did. I mean, trying to, I mean no, it's not clean It's not all. clean but, at all. No, no, but, but I, I, they I'm can thinking... Do, they can do just fine, but I feel like how much of each universe are they going to put into so the, that's what, this? You, know, you like, see, I don't think they're going to the go formula? from they're not like the Men in Black, like J and K are not going to visit their world. It's going to be the opposite, right? They're going to take Tatum and like Chang Tatum and Jonah Hill and put them in the alien universe because to see them react is way funnier yeah. just than to see of Tommy Lee Jones and just come obviously, to a regular universe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So does that mean that the entire Twenty Two Jump Street and Twenty One Jump Street universe has been in the Men in Black universe all this time? And I mean, don't know? so that means I think something's gonna happen where they they see something like an alien and they try to get you know uh, what's the what's the word the flashy thing the flashy thing yeah yeah <laughs> it's called the flashy <laughs> no, the neuralizer the neuralizer right yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. so I, I think they're gonna avo- somehow they'll avoid that being happened to them and they'll yeah. just find out the truth about it yeah, that's, that's it's gonna be yeah, something stupid it's gonna be like, hilarious like yeah so like a simple conceit to make um, a movie happen so my little tidbit that I have for you yeah um, I don't know you may or may not have heard about this one of our most beloved game shows okay uh, from I think it was like the it started in 1990 went till 95 let me, give see, or take. Can, let me see if I can guess this Crystal Maze? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Have you heard about this? No, what, what is happening? Is they, it back? They had an Indiegogo campaign. They raised oh 185%, 185% of, of what they wanted. And they have built a Crystal Maze in London. Dude, that so is amazing. The show is not coming back, unfortunately. Okay, cool. Richard because O'Brien I- is, uh, he is like producing this production. Uh, dude, that guy is the, by he the way. He is not hosting the experience so it's, it's, it's like okay. a crystal maze experience experience yeah. yeah so so y- I think it's like about 50 pounds or something like that I'm gonna blow your mind even one more please do so I went to the crystal maze uh, there was one uh, kind of probably not gonna be as awesome as the one which is gonna be in London uh-huh. but there's one in Dubai there's a crystal what? maze in Dubai yeah so uh, still is it still like ah, dude I'm not when was this when was this this was I mean even when I left like this was in Dubai in like 2008 uh, eight. So it, there's this one place is a, a mall called Wafi, and like in Wafi they had like a thing called Galeria, which is like an arcade-ish kind of thing. And one part was an arcade, and one was the Crystal Maze. Like they had like, and it, they had four zones, like the proper zone, the industrial mm-hmm. zone, the medieval zone. They the had Aztec. the junk uh, Aztec zone and future, and future yeah? yeah. And you had to. Do, so what was not cool about it was that uh, two things. One was like. All the tasks were really cool, like the, mm-hmm. the challenges were great, uh, but there was no actual physical crystals. Like there were no oh. like you couldn't you don't have to collect. You have what? to you have to press a button and then like it'll appear on a screen like as a digital oh, crystal. Right. So that was a bit of a fail. I agree. Like was, I, were there automatic lock-ins? Yeah. No. Oh no, there were no lock. <laughs> there were no lock-ins. Because I mean, I feel like so with this one, so it's um there are lock-ins. It's, it's fifty. No, there aren't lock-ins because it's fifty pounds, which is not which is not chump change. That's a lot of money, and it's uh, but that's the fun of it. I mean, it's no, but, but, but imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine this. I mean, yeah. so you pay fifty pounds, and it takes a couple hours to do the whole thing because yeah. it's a it's a full blown experience. Like they said, like you said, it's you know it's it's good the whole four stages, and at the end of it, you have to get in the big the dome. dome and yeah, you get money. Uh, well, you don't get money, but you just sort of. Uh, get so the I'll tell you what they did. But, yeah. But imagine if you spend fifty pounds and then in the first in. thing you get locked in for so you spend two hours. So that's the like game. No, no. Then your teammates are assholes <laughs> because 
<laughs> well, I'll tell you why. Because in the original, because in the original, if you have to, if you want to free a friend, okay, if you can get somebody out, oh it's God. because <laughs> just listen. This is really important. This is a, a big part of the rules of the game of Crystal Maze. Is that <sighs> you can win another crystal yeah. and you can yeah, of course I know you can and you but, can just trade a crystal to but, get the guy out. But that's it. What that's if, what you have to do. What if your friends are in fact <laughs> assholes? <laughs> yeah, that yeah yeah. What if th- and they don't. I mean, then, then you just uh, then you spend fifty pounds and a lot. You lost you spend, a lot. More you spend. Than, you've lost fifty pounds, <laughs> and you will, friendship. by choice, lose your friendship with these. You lost a lot more than fifty pounds, my friend. Jesus. Yeah, but yeah, because like the whole point is for you. If you're, especially if that person's a good. Well, they're not. Clearly, they're not a good player. <laughs> They've not gotten through. But like, you would go and trade a crystal. You'd you'd forfeit that time which you'd get in the crystal dome mm-hmm. to just like chill with. I mean, to to have that person with you. So yeah, that I mean, it's totally fine. You should have lock-ins, and even the ones in Dubai were like they were time-based. So you would have you would have lost a crystal basically mm. in in all that time. But dude, come on! I mean, I, I don't know why the- I don't know why they haven't brought it back. I haven't looked up into like why they chose to do the actual real thing as opposed to bring the show back. I yeah. mean, it's I'm so glad that it is a thing. So you know um, what I always felt like the host. I forget his name. Richard O'Brien. Richard O'Brien. Amazing. Is he not the true inspiration? For Jack Sparrow. Oh, absolutely! With his costume choices, he's with his mannerisms, so and everything. He's so whimsical. And I mean, he he's the guy behind the Rocky Horror Picture Show, so like it makes oh, a whole lot of, of course, sense. Yeah, yeah. That everything makes about sense. him makes complete sense. Makes once, him. once I found that out, I was like, this "Oh, that's so great!" Fits perfectly. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Of course, he is. That guy was so weird. And he's so he's, a, so he's amazing. Yeah, and especially his little asides to the camera. Absolutely, like he, the, him and Mumsy. <laughs> yeah, him and like every time him and Mumsy came on, like you just didn't oh, care God. at all about so the funny. actual contestants. Like screw them. Do the I just want to see him. Uh, if you have you watched Crystal Maze lately? Like uh, we watched last time was yeah, with we you. Did, right? We saw it like six months ago. Maybe yeah. I think we did saw. Did you it. not feel like the contestants are just idiots, dude? Like yeah. some of them were just like, but I don't know what to do. I, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> where is, where, what, just get just get out of there. Just get out of there. It's fine. Don't. Just get stuck in there, man. Don't, I feel like within, within the first five seconds of every sh- of every like um, what was it called? Uh, the every stage challenge, no, every challenge. Yeah. Within the first five seconds of the person walking into the room, you knew whether or not they were going to get, get it, it because ninety percent of them they walk and just have this completely dumbstruck look. Yeah. There could be there could be a crystal like right in front of them and like here's a rope, swing and go get it. But do like, you think it's because do, we watched it? Of course it is. I, I mean, mean like, that's what like with no, every show. The thing, no, also with every game show, like you like the crystal maze like was unprecedented, right? Like nobody had no like it didn't exist. True. And so when you go in for the first time as a contestant, you're just like, "What the I'm hell?" I'm sure it was in? incredibly overwhelming and intimidating. Yeah, must have been. Now that now that you've seen the show and you know like the ins and Which outs of it, why the Crystal Maze is one show that needs to come back? It really does. Okay, there isn't. A, I can't think of any other show that has that sort of feel that is around anymore. Like, yeah, the, it, it, Well, there it, are game shows like the, the American Ninja <clears throat> Warrior. Like, have you seen that? It's like Takeshi's Castle, um, but like hardcore. <laughs> this one is coming back. Crap. What am I? Uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yeah, Legends of the Hidden Temple. That's gonna yeah. be amazing. Amazing. But again, it's for kids. So like. There's no adult version of that, and that's what Crystal Maze was. But Crystal no, Maze was an adult version of no, but you have that I mean, kind of like Takeshi's adventure ca- and action kind of a thing. Was Takeshi's Castle also like that? I guess I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's far more silly and just more, like yeah, silly, just yeah. totally stupid. Crystal Maze and <laughs> Crystal Maze and uh, Legend of the Hidden Temple were actually to be thought about. Like you have to think yeah, it through. You have to true. put some thought behind I it. I think that should definitely so, come back. And we like, need more game shows, guys. Yeah, is what I'm getting. Yeah, we man, need like, more like actual physical challenge based game shows because it's good viewing. Also, it's so fun. I mean, like like Wipeout also. It's yeah. so funny to watch. <laughs> Such a great show. Thing. Cool. Anywho, great show. Just do lots of shows that have come back. Lots of shows that should come back. Even though we cry. Every time there is a reboot, <laughs> cringeworthy as they may be, most of them are actually a lot of fun. Yeah, they're just true, including the Pop yeah. Up Girls. Yeah, cool. So if you have any thoughts on the Pop Up Girls or any of the cartoons or any of the shows that we talked about on today's show, uh, please. Uh, and this is something that you should do every time we have an episode, especially if you're a new listener, uh, or exclusively on Savan. Uh, then find us on our website, which is www.geekfruit.in. That's geekfruit.in. Uh, you can mail us. At contactgeekfruit at gmail dot com, we get a lot of mails from a lot of people who want to write for our website yeah. uh, and our editorial, and so thank you so to make much that for happen. all that. Yeah, you thank guys. you so much for please for keep writing. them coming in, and we will we will uh, oblige see. you. Yeah, yes, we will we definitely. Will, we would love to get into working with. Yeah, you. because the whole point of this entire exercise is to find more people like like us mm-hmm. and to to for us to all hang out. We have great episodes uh, coming out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, some about board gaming and about where you can do that in Bombay and where all of us nerds can actually meet up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And you can find us on all social media at Geek Fruit HQ. Uh, 
we are on Instagram and we're on Twitter and we're on Facebook our yep. page you can follow us there we're going to have an episode very soon obviously about civil war coming up i know that everybody that listens to this is almost definitely going to see that yeah, movie so excited about uh, that keep excited an about ear out for that yeah. and if you have any thoughts you want to send at us once you see it as well please yeah, send please them do. our way cuz everybody's going to be talking about that so cool. let's get thanks just new all right thank you i guess <laughs> we'll see you guys next week may the force be with you Hey, so now that you're done listening to our show, you should really listen to a show that's equally good, if not better. It's called Cyrus Says, and it is good. It's very good. It Quite features good. Cyrus. And other people. And his name is in the title of the show. And it's possibly more random than ours. Yes, and But that's actually saying something. Eloquent. So everyone, go listen to him. What you said. Our podcasts bring all the boys to the yard, and damn right, they're better than yours. But you don't need to stand outside in the yard. Just follow IVM Podcasts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We might be on Tinder too. Just go ahead and swipe right.